Hey everyone, this is Dave Pike, Motor City Mechanic. Today's video is going to be on removing the radiator assembly on 2005 all the way up to 2010 Chrysler 300s, Dodge Magnums, and Dodge Chargers. Now, of course, the Magnum was phased out long before 2010, but nonetheless, it falls within that category. So definitely check out the video and follow the steps and you shouldn't have any problems. Now in this particular vehicle, we're going to be replacing both the fan assembly as well as the radiator. Uh, the blades on the fan actually start separating on this. It pretty much tore all the blades off to where there's just a motor and a hub, no blades. It damaged the shroud and it also made contact with the radiator. Made some nice little circles in there in different areas where different pieces of the plastic fans made contact. So we'll be replacing both the radiator and the fan assembly on this one. So I've got a complete assembly right here. This actually has the condenser as well as the radiator and the fan assembly. Now, here's your fans. You've got two separate fans. Um, being that it's out of the car, I can show you a couple things. There's only two fasteners holding the fan on. One here, one here. They got some little hooks right here at the bottom on both corners at the bottom that the radiator that the fan sits in first and then fastens. So when you're in the car, these are the two fasteners you will be taking loose to get this fan assembly out. Once you get it out, you'll be down to the radiator, of course. So why we still got this radiator assembly sitting here that we can show you off the car. This is the drain. Now the drain's on the passenger side, bottom corner, inside the engine compartment. So this right here, all you got to do is grab it with a pair of pliers or any kind of tools that can grab it with and start unscrewing it. You're just going to turn counterclockwise. Hit it back out and it'll finally stop. It's kind of a ramp type system, kind of threaded, I guess you could say like that, to where it goes in and out. And then once it starts draining, it will come out this hose here. Now, if the radiator hasn't had the drain backed off in a long time, it's got a lot of miles on it, you may want to spray it down with some lube. Uh, if you can get up in the hose, spray that with some lube as well to try to get up in here. Because there's an O-ring that keeps this sealed. And if it's been on there for a while, you could tear that O-ring. Now you wouldn't know that the O-ring's torn until you go back filling it with antifreeze thinking that you're done with the job and then you get seepage coming out either around the drain itself or out the tube. So definitely if you can, add a little spray up in here to kind of help that O-ring as it's turning and coming out not to rip. This particular vehicle does have the 5.7 liter Hemi. So one of the first things we need to do is we need to work on getting the air cleaner assembly off which would include the rubber boot that goes from the air filter assembly to the throttle body and we're going to have to get the cover off as well to get to the fastener. So we just go ahead and grab the deck of the piece. And now we can move on to the clamps that hold the boot on to the upper housing as well as the throttle body. Now you can take this off together as one piece. That's probably what we're going to end up doing. So we'll back off the 8 millimeter hose clamp here. We do have one connector to release for the air intake temp sensor and one bolt holding the housing for the air filter down there. And we'll take those two things off as one piece. The air temp sensor right here actually has a two-stage lock on it. You get this red piece right here that you need to slide back. I'm going to grab a small screwdriver to push back to release it. Now that that's released, I can squeeze in on the end here. If I squeeze in, I should be able to pull it off. So that's your air intake sensor. That we that is what we've got to disconnect to get the boot off. Go ahead and back off the eight millimeter hose clamp style right there. Put the rubber boot to the throttle body, and we'll come over here to the air box. Take the pin off. Now what I can do is start wiggling it loose from the throttle body. I've also got a rubber hose that goes from the upper lid to the intake. I need to get that loose. And now what I can do is I can just lift straight up. I get the whole assembly and sit it off to the side. And we're on the driver's side of the vehicle. Over here is where the air filter box was. This is your fan assembly. One of the bolts that I showed you off the car. This one will be located right here. This one's actually a 10 millimeter. So I've got to back that one all the way up. And then got to move over to the passenger side. Now on the passenger side, you've got your electrical connector right here. We're going to have to unplug. 
just squeeze on that connect that portion of the connector right there and it'll slide off and then the other 10 millimeter we need to take off of that fan shroud is right here directly below the upper radiator hose that's the one right there that'd be our 10 so that we can start getting this fan assembly off so we're going to work on getting that connector disconnected like I was mentioning. This is the electric fan assembly, main harness. We're going to disconnect it by squeezing in on that lock and pulling it. Now we got them both separated. Now in a previous video I showed you how to remove the fan assembly without removing the upper radiator hose. Now we're replacing the radiator. So I might as well just go ahead and make it a little bit easier for me. I'm going to go ahead and just use the drain on the radiator, drain all the antifreeze out. Then I can take the upper hose off and I don't have to fight as much getting that fan out. So we're going to move on to draining the radiator next. Yeah, I'm going to get to the radiator drain from up above. As you see, that's the alternator, that's the belt. I have thin narrow arms so I can do this without having too much of a problem. And some people might not be able to. I can get down here for a pair of pliers. I can work on rotating that drain. Now I've got me a catch pan directly up under it so I can catch any runoff. More turns, and I'll have it. But yeah, I'm doing mine from up above. Now, if you want to do it from down below, you gotta remove the plastic shroud up under and crawl up under. Now, I, like I said, I have access from doing up here because it's just the way I'm physically made, and that's the way I do it to save me some time. Yeah, the radiator's been drained. Now we can work on getting the hose off. We'll go ahead and release the upper spring-loaded clamp. This one still has a spring loaded. Some people have already replaced them over time with a regular radiator hose clamp. And that would be for the upper. Now, one further around just by the radiator. It's just right out of view. It's right here. It's not hard to get to. What we'll do is we'll probably use a hose pick as well to get up in here. These tools are awesome because these rubber hose have a tendency to want to stick to either the radiator or whatever they're going to. Like, for example, the thermostat housing on this one. I definitely always recommend having one of these. It come in handy for a lot of different things, not just for these radiator hoses. So we got to work on getting that loose. Now we'll move on to the other clamp. Now on to the upper hose spring-loaded clamp. Squeeze in on it. And what we'll do is we'll start working it away and get it off. Now the hose. This one we don't have to pick that side. This side actually just comes right off. Now we can take the hose, set to the side. Alright, so where are we? We've got the upper radiator hose off. We've got the two bolts holding the fan shroud on. And we've also got the electrical connector disconnected. So at this point, it's just a matter of lifting straight up. Now, We'll move it slightly to the passenger side because we do have to clear the transmission lines over here. There shouldn't be too much to it. Now, it can still be a tight space up in here the way the pulleys are up against these motors. Uh, this one's not too bad. Some of them are very, very tight. Just take your time. So there we go. That's our fan assembly we took off. And if you notice on this side, there's something missing. We have no blades whatsoever. Uh, that's come off, made contact with a lot of things, including the radiator, and I'll show you that. So as you can see, you can see all the circle patterns, all the damage that occurred when that fan blade started coming apart on both of them. We've got some real deep gouges in different places on the radiator, especially on the driver's side, and that's one reason why this is going to get replaced, because it's done weakened up the aluminum fans where some of them it hasn't started leaking, but it's a very good chance you had enough pressure, enough heat, it will start leaking. But definitely, the blades made contact with the radiator. That's why it's getting replaced. So now we'll move on to that lower radiator hose. That'd be the last hose we need to take loose from the radiator assembly itself. Just use your spring-loaded tool. Get down on here. And squeeze. And then what we can do is we can work on getting it out of the way now. I'm going to get in the way of the camera for a second. I apologize. There we go. Now we can try to grab it by hand. There we go. If it moves, great. Start wiggling it off. Still got our catch pan up under because you can always still have some residual antifreeze in the system. And there we go. We've got that one off. Lower hose is off. 
Like I said, it'd be draining into a catch pan.